Hey TLTers, how you doing? Today we're going to take a look at Neptune OS. It is a Debian stable release based OS. Let's go ahead and take a look at their webpage first and see what Neptune's all about. And this is what you're looking at. This is NeptuneOS.com's About Neptune section on their webpage. What is Neptune? Neptune is a GNU Linux distribution for desktops based fully upon Debian stable bullseye. It ships with the modern KDE Plasma desktop with, in, with its main view on a good looking multimedia system. So apparently this uh, operating system is uh, geared for multimedia use, eh, whether it's perusing YouTube, watching videos in VLC, maybe streaming stuff, whichever. But uh, either way, it's geared for multimedia use. It is also a system which is flexible and very useful on USB sticks. So I guess you could run it in a live environment. Um, if you'd like, and it's very, and it'll run smoothly on there. It doesn't uh, slow down or anything like that. Therefore, we've developed an easy to use applications like USB installer, as well as a persistent creator. Ah, oh, yeah. So they are kind of gearing it to be a, a portable OS where you throw it on a thumb drive and you can boot into it because of the persistent section. So you can uh, add things to it and it'll keep, the, and it'll save the changes, not into RAM, but actually onto the USB stick. So that the next time you boot, into that USB drive, it's there. Uh, that allows you to store the changes to your system. Like I said, the Debian repository is a major base for getting the updates and new software. Furthermore, Neptune ships with its own software repository. Oh. Uh, to update our own application, see the Neptune repositories for more information. Neptune tries to get the BOS message of a fully supported multimedia OS to the next generation of users. Wow. So they're taking the BOS and they're trying to bring it to a, a more modern day feel. I can respect that. Uh, if you click on tutorials over here, uh, real quickly, let's go to their tutorial section. And here, this is how you can upgrade and do um, the update repositories, of course. Uh, so for upgrading, it wants you, oh, you go to this little link right here where you download a script. Um, as you can see in the picture here, you download the script. Then, of course, you're going to want to right click on it yeah, and set it as an ex ex executable script by right clicking on it. And in the prop, you go to properties and you click the execute section here. Then after you're done with that, then you can right click on it at, and open it up in a terminal and it'll and hit enter and it'll execute the script and it will do all that good stuff. So that is that is that is a way to update it now let's go back to the about uh neptune's main focus is providing an elegant out-of-the-box experience for users therefore we ship with a nice and simple overall look and feel as well as a whole bunch of multimedia tools codecs flash players audio and video players so um it is geared for so much it's got support for apps desktop is going to be debian so you or um uh, kde sorry the debian core and hardware so it's probably going to you know support the hardware that is um mainly supported by the bullseye not a uh, rolling release as far as like new and current software patches that are out there but you know more a little bit more dated uh drivers and tools so uh the neptune repositories down here um is where you could find them neptune uses a combination of debian netrunner and its own software sources on an installed system, you can find the software sources under Etsy apt sources dot list dot D. They're divided into separate files. Interesting. Neptune ships with two software repositories. The main one contains all Neptune related configuration applications. The second one is called the KDE repo and contains all KDE plasma KDE applications and frameworks. Both of them are signed by our GP, G, JPG keys, GPG keys. Uh, sorry, I can't talk today. <laughs> uh, so it's completely forked, but it's forked um, completely where they've developed their some of their own software and they're providing maintenance for it as well. And this update, whenever you do an update or you refresh the, the mirrors list or the package list, it'll pull from all the repositories. So you're 
made available. If you click on the download, it takes you to where you download, which is where I did. I downloaded the ISO from the, the DE server. So anyhow, that is a look at Neptune OS and what it's about. So it's called uh, Neptune 7.5 ADA. So let's go ahead and let's take a dive into it and see what it looks like in real time on hardware. Okay, I made a mistake. I said hardware. I meant virtualization hardware. Uh, I installed it in my vert manager. I gave it 20 gigabytes. I gave it four gigs of RAM and four of my CPU cores. Uh, and this is what it looks like. It uh, it did not have NeoFetch installed. I installed it because I wanted people to see um, what it's using. And so here it is. It's Neptune 7.5. Uh, it's on my virtual machine. It's using kernel 5.18, so it's an updated, more current kernel. Uh, it's using Bash 5.1, Plasma 5.20, which that's older, considering it we're on 5.25 or 5.24, I can't, 5.25. Uh, it uses the K1 window manager, and it's using the elementary Neptune Breeze Plasma icon. So I guess it's they've. This is one of their own packages that they that they are applications that they have and and such, which is the Neptune Breeze icons they've created with their own the i the their own theme, excuse me. The icons are the Tila theme, uh, or Tila icons, the terminals console, and that is it. So once again, as we know, it was definitely a KDE that's inspired this window manager, or that is the window manager. So we're gonna look on, right clicking on here and seeing what kind of wallpapers they have that they offer out of the box since they have their own. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. They've got, looks like, some of their own Neptune wallpapers in here and some of the KDE ones that are in here, which is kind of, it's a lot. It's going to be a lot because that's one one thing that, you know, KDE's like this stream of light. Well, that looks kind of cool. Let's see what that looks like. Ooh, yeah, see, that's beautiful. I like that. Darker wallpaper because it's got, I'm using the lighter theme, which I could probably change to a dark theme, but let's roll with this for right now. At any instance, uh, this is how you can change the wallpaper. This is looking really, really nice. It's got your standard KDE desktop with a few icons on the uh, on the desktop with the install Neptune, the home, and discover as well. Uh, if you take and you click down here on the application launcher, it's got your standard uh, launcher. Here are your programs that are pinned there for your like taskbar. Chromium uses Chromium web browser and Thunderbird Mail, which is nice it's using the uh that's the thunderbird version or the mail version of uh, mail client of kde so uh once again this is your chromium this is what it looks like just like chrome go to about chromium let's see what version we're on 104 so it's relatively you know, it's a couple versions behind but it's okay or one version behind i believe anyhow it looks good uh, that's Chromium. Uh, it's got for office it's got LibreOffice installed under utilities you've got your usual uh icons that are in there that are your ones that you'd find under, under the uh kde desktop but it does have latte doc which um if i'm not mistaken and i believe that the latte doc developer has stepped away from that project and so that's probably going to be changing in this as there is no more support for it and might have to go to i'd say maybe like cairo doc or some other doc i mean there's couple doc opportunities out there but either way uh that's under utilities for settings it's got your grub customizer your system settings and printer settings uh, if we look at system settings uh we will notice that it's the typical kde system settings where you can customize literally everything um on your bot information if you click on there yep it's the 5.20 framework is 5.78 qt 5.55 being that KDE is developed off of QT. So uh, global themes, yeah, you got the different dark themes here like Netrunner Blue, Netrunner Black, Neptune Dark, which is what I believe is on now. No, the regular Neptune is. Let's go to Neptune Dark and see what that looks like. And that's what it looks like. Everything turned dark. Uh, Netrunner Black X, let's take a look at that one. Not much different, only it looks kind of like that arrow. I kind of like that. Um, I'm going to keep that there. That's nice. And plasma style, you can click your plasma, which is like your oxygen, but black X is similar to that, only not as gradient or shiny. But either way, so that, once again, typical KDE settings. I got squirrel. <laughs> I got 
well, you know, whenever you get a chance, I do window managers. So for me to customize with a click is kind of nice uh, because with tiling window managers you tend to, to customize like that. You have to use nitrogen for wallpaper and then to theme your GTK, you've got to do a lot of, oftentimes a lot of your own, you know, configure editing of configuration files to include the different colors that you want and that kind of stuff. So it's kind of, it's kind of fun to play with those things, but it, I still prefer my Windows Manager. Anyway, I digress. So under settings, that was what was under settings for development. It's got your Qt5 stuff for you to edit any of the Qts or to design anything in Qt. Uh, for graphics, of course, it's got your GIMP, which we saw earlier. Gwen views your image viewer. Um, Inkscape. So this is another one of those distros that's doing that. Inkscape and GIMP are kind of the same. Uh, it's I, I don't, you know, I don't know why a lot of distros do that. They do double applications for the same thing that you want to do uh, instead of just letting, putting one as your basic one and just letting people, if they don't like it, to change it out to put a new one in. Uh, the one that they prefer in, I, I don't understand why they do that, but they do do that. For internet, you have Conquer. Uh, you have Conversation, which is the same thing as what most people know it's pigeon but that's this is the kde version of it uh thunderbird uh, x11 via vnc v server and chromium web browser so which conqueror is also a file manager it's like explorer for windows where you could use it as a web browser and or a file explorer uh and then of course chromium so it's kind of bordering on the same thing i just said about double application double double the duty applications that do the same duty uh but either way there's that for multimedia you have amrock ardor amrock's a music player ardor is uh like in audacity camus which is the camera thing caden live pavu oh look they got ardor <laughs> <coughs> excuse me they have ardor and audacity again doubled up applications encode and VLC player and Zadeo, which is a uh, Zadeo, which is a uh, CD application for games. They've got Breakout, Mahjong, and K Mines under system. They have Back in Time, which is very, very nice. It's um, kind of like your system restore uh, application. You can do a regular one or root, which it's root is the one that's going to change uh, root core base files. Whereas back in time, I want to change your at home directory. Uh, it's also got time shift. Muon package manager. Uh, Discover. Dolphin. Grub customizer. Console. Yakwake, which is a drop down terminal uh, instance. And then under science math, you got LibreOffice math. And then, of course, your power session here, which that's strange that they have that in the menu when they actually have it in the actual application launcher so either way uh, it's there so uh for your pin programs you can see what they are you've got chromium you got thunderbird you've got dolphin file manager which is a file manager and we'll see what version they're on on that just to whoa where are we at here help and about and we're on 20.12 so um, it's your typical file manager. You have your places that you go to on the left. My bad. You got your places that you go to in the left hand pane. And then in the right hand is your actual directory that you're open to. Initially, when you open it up, it always defaults to the home directory. Uh, then you've got the discover software center, which, uh, firing it up, I think it's going to take a minute to populate. It won't be as fast opening up as, um, most other times it will be. But anyhow, so here is what it is. It's got all your applications that are pretty much so your KDE applications that you could update through this real, real easily and, or add if you need so. Um, then it's got VLC and then your settings uh, in your right hand side. It's got your time and date. Uh, usually they have the uh, power session over here, but uh, sometimes they have a power session over here, but they don't here or a recycling bin in this version. Uh, it's got your volume. It's got your devices that are connected, your internet connection and your notification center, uh, typical KDE and your time and date. Uh, if you click on it, you get the calendar. So that is Neptune as a whole. Uh, it is a very easy point and click, pretty much already set up out of the box for doing multimedia. However, to me, it 
didn't one thing that it could have included, although it isn't an, a KDE app, it's actually developed, I think, and maintained by by Linux Mint team. Uh, for completion of the whole multimedia aspect, it didn't have an IP TV or IP streaming source. I mean, VLC, you can do that with VLC, but it's a little bit more complicated, whereas what I'm about to mention would be a, a good addition to any desktop environment that you're running or actually any distro uh, that I use myself, and that's Hypnotics. Uh, because with that, it already comes with free IPTV that you can go to, but it also allows you, if you go into the settings, you can actually install other IPTV sources. An example, ones that use like Extreme Codes or M3 8, M3U 8U streams, uh, just like you would in VLC. And it has a much more modern look and feel stream that's geared for that. So that would be one thing that I would actually add to this is Hypnotics. And minus that, it's completely loaded for all your multimedia things, uh, but not for content creators. It doesn't. Ha it has Caden Live, but it doesn't have OBS automatically installed. But that's still not a break deal, make or break deal or you know kind of thing. So uh, I think it's a pretty nice OS. It's lightweight. It's pretty fast. Um, it's not super resource intensive. Uh, I think that it's it's a, a, a great one to start with. Uh, if you're a new user, it's pretty easy to install. It's very easy to customize because of the KDE side of it. Uh, also, it's got its own package managers, which is nice. They develop their own packages specifically for use with this, which is very nice. So, yeah, uh, I strongly suggest you guys throw it in a VM somewhere, or if you want to put it on hardware, put it on hardware. Give it a test drive. Take it out Take it out for, for, for a date and see what it does, because I thoroughly enjoyed mine. So, anyhow, you guys, thanks so much for watching. Visit us at all our um, social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, on Facebook, we are at Linux Community Reloaded. That's our face group home uh, for the Linux Tube. Uh, great people there. Lots of wonderful, uh, uh, knowledgeable veterans in there, as well as a lot of new people that are new to Linux in there as well, asking and getting help from people like us in there. So if you can help, come join us over there and help. If you're a new user and you're looking for answers and you've come to this channel, please join us over there. There's there's other people in there that have the same questions that you do, and maybe you can help them. Either way, y'all keep doing what y'all do and keep on Linux, and thanks so much. Have a great day.